Hi, my name is uh, Brian Edmond. As was stated, I'm here today to talk to you a bit about how we worked with Aptera uh, to build a user interface for uh, their electric vehicle technology. When we first started talking with Aptera, uh, they really wanted to get a user interface to market very quickly. Uh, there was a lot of challenges involved in that. And some of these would really be to get a compelling user interface uh, that really showed all the features they wanted to get across in a very short timeline. Everyone today wants the same user interface as they have when they work uh, on, their tele on their phone or their tablet. And they really want that interface to be the same as what they see in the vehicle, from how they interface with it to how the graphics work, how the animations and different flows. And this is something that was critical to Aptera when they wanted to get it out to market, especially with the revolutionary vehicle and its very unique look. They wanted to make sure they had some hardware and a software platform and a UI, UX that people really wanted to use and interact with. They also wanted to promote the energy efficiency of the vehicle, which is very critical to them, especially in the market of uh, the electric vehicles. Their timeline was very short, six to eight weeks, and their budget very tight as they're really seeking funding in an investor phase. And they wanted to get everything done and in the vehicle so they could show off on a short time frame. Now, a little bit about what really Aptera is. So you can see the vehicle here. It's really a solar electric vehicle. Uh, it has a very long battery lifetime. You can see a 100 mile range on a charge. Uh, it has a very different look, very revolutionary. And they really wanted to show off the capabilities of the vehicle from a charge, uh, battery management, use and efficiency standpoint. It's very critical for them and frankly, very revolutionary to be able to the user to see how their decisions of how they rode, drove the vehicle would impact the battery life and the efficiency and allow you to make those decisions and feed them back into how you use them. So when we talk about focusing on efficiency and they really wanted that tablet-like user interface and the driver to not only be able to use it but understand their decisions as I was talking about. So everything from when you can uh, use the vents, the heating systems and other areas and how they would impact the battery efficiency, the lifetime, the range of the vehicle, and really give that feedback directly to the user and the driver in a simple, efficient manner, while still maintaining that great user interface, look and feel, uh, a system that the user really wanted to interact with and was very compelling to them. However, since it's in a vehicle, you have to maintain all the other aspects that people expect. These are things in your UI, like your HVAC control systems, uh, navigation systems, media players, uh, other climate controls, diagnostic information. And even when you think of the navigation controls, it's areas such as when you're plotting where you want to drive and using GPS, how does that feed back into my charge? Uh, when will I have to charge the vehicle? What's my range? How could I make some new decisions in the vehicle to impact that range and uh, get a longer trip? We also looked at the hardware platform that they were using. So Aptera chose a Toradex iDatum X8. Uh, this is a quad-core processor. Uh, they're running the Linux operating system. And this processor really gave them the CPU and GPU capabilities to drive a large 15.6 inch display at a very high resolution but also gave them the ability to interface directly with the CAN bus on the vehicle to gather the diagnostic data and control. But not only that, it let them optimize the interface with animations, effects, that tablet-like look and feel, and very uh, feedback-driven to the user without any lag. Now I'm gonna talk for a few minutes about how the actual GUI is built. This was very, uh, interesting because in the six to eight week time frame we had, it was not just to implement the UI, but we also had to do the wireframing, the UX design, graphics design, application integration, and direct a hardware and control with CAN, which is a, a very large task. And we felt we were very efficient in how all the teams work together to bring this to market. So you can see here that we did the UX development and what is critical here was we really wanted to make sure the Aptera team was involved. Uh, not only were they designing the vehicle, we wanted their feedback. Uh, they were really the stakeholders in this as to how they wanted people to interface with it and 
really wanted to succeed with their vision. To that respect, we used a graphics designer to do initial wire frames, and that allowed us to share those with the Aptera team. And they could give their feedback on it. This was everything from the look and feel and flow all the way to how the user used it, how you move from screen to screen, what effects were used. And we could take that feedback from their team to feed that into the design to make sure we got what they were looking for. Once the wire framing was complete and we had our contract of how the user interface would look and work, we worked on generating actual design assets. These are the graphics, the colors, the fonts, the look, the feel, uh, animation flows. They were started on initial screens, but what that allowed us to do is then paralyze the workflow and have the application development team start to build those screens out, uh, add all the assets, move through the screens, simulate, test, and actually deploy directly on hardware very quickly. So what the deploy on hardware quickly let us do was to actually see the design assets in the vehicle uh, as they were intended in context, and then allow the Aptera team and the stakeholders to give feedback on that and feed that directly back into design. What this allows us to do is make sure we reach their vision, but also decrease the time frames that we could see something in the vehicle. Uh, when we talk about some of these screen designs, as we've discussed, the battery management system was very critical to them, very important for the vehicle and its use. And these were some of the screens we did very early on when we talk about this iterative UX design process, uh, where we could tune it and make sure it looked and interfaced properly. However, this was also critical to make sure we gave the user the information in a way they could digest and interface with it. This included adding animations, uh, buttons, swipeable logic. Um, so we gave them that data and it was interesting to work with and compelling for them to want to see and interface with. Also in order to get real-time data from the system, as I mentioned, we used the IDOT MX8 from Tordex with had a CAN bus and we interfaced directly with the CAN control data to really give real live interactive data to the user. So when we look at the rapid design and we think about how I mentioned the, how quick you can get to hardware in a system is very critical. We look at the, the iteration. Iteration is something that happens in all user interfaces. Uh, it's something that's always there. And once you, especially once you see something on hardware up close in a vehicle, changes were inevitable. So in our case, we use a storyboard development tool to build the user interface out. But what that allows us to do was to actually build Photoshop designs, uh, deploy them to the vehicle, test them. But later what we could do, if they wanted a change to let's say a light and dark theme, um, when you think of day and night mode in a vehicle and such, we could make those changes very quickly at the design level, uh, re-export the Photoshop graphics content and very quickly re-implement it and deploy directly to the hardware, which allowed the Aptera team to quickly see the effects of their ideas and changes in the vehicle in a fast manner. Another area that was very critical when we look at modern user interfaces, especially when everyone is using uh, their mobile phones, their tablets, is things like gesture control and how the user interfaces with it. And we really want it to seem seamless from where they move from their phone to their vehicle and back. So in that case, if Terra team really wanted to see gesture control in the UI, and a good example of this would be an area such as the media screen, where we have media gesture controls where you could swipe to move between songs and tracks, move a scrubber, and really have that touch screen be aware and give the feedback to the user when they're actually touching the screen and using it. And again, this was used uh, directly through the capacitive display on the iDOT MX8 and brought into Storyboard to pull the gesture of data back. When we look at building a UI, we always have to think about getting real data from the system. It's not only about building a user interface and showing animations and effects. You need to actually control the native system. Uh, you need to give the feedback to the user, especially when we discuss things like the battery management system, giving real-time data or graphing data, or even controlling HVAC systems. And one thing we've always focused on is decoupling of the user interface from the back end. So decoupling how you use an interface with it from the actual back end control data. 
And that is key in having a well-designed and testable system. And again, since we use Storyboard, we use the mechanism called Storyboard IO to actually send the data back and forth between the UI and the backend, which allowed early on the definition of what the data was, how it would be transmitted, and develop that real contract that you may get when you have between the UI and the backend. And this allowed us to parallelize our workflows so that we could have the user interface or application team build out screens, uh, work on animations, test on their desktop, and implement it. And then what they could do is focus on the back end development. Uh, the back end team could really work on the hardware and systems like that. Uh, feeding into that, when we talk about how the back end and the front end team would work in parallelized fashion, uh, there's always a lot of stakeholders involved when you're looking at building these types of systems. You have your UX designers, uh, product managers, uh, project managers. You have a marketing team. Uh, then you have the embedded software team, hardware engineers, all of these quality assurance and test. And it's really critical that you can have these teams work very efficiently together in order to achieve on your timeframe, especially when you have a very short timeline. You want to make sure that these teams can all work in parallel so that your UX designers can build out the screens and not have to wait for an entire backend system to be available to actually deploy it to hardware. Uh, I've always felt that the faster you can get to a piece of hardware and actually see something in action, it's the better for your customers and for your design process. Also getting things to hardware faster allows your QA and test team to get more time on device. They can feed back issues they find faster to product managers. Uh, marketing will actually get to see the look and feel on the device faster. So this paralyzed design uh, an implementation workflow will really decrease your time to market and you won't have to have the serialized workflow before where a lot of teams would end up taking shortcuts on UI to get it out on time where you really didn't realize what you wanted at the beginning of your design. So when we, we think about this project in general, uh, the project results, it was extremely successful. Uh, we reached the end product on schedule and on budget. Uh, we managed to meet their design challenges and Aptera was very happy. Also their investors, their users were extremely happy. Um, there's a lot of screenshots here from some of the results on their YouTube channel and other areas like that. They did a launch in 2020. Uh, they realized a hundred million in pre-orders and sold out within 24 hours. So getting to market and budget in this short time frame was really key on the ability to do the iterative design process from UX, wire framing into design and fast implementation to hardware. And that parallelized workflow that we've discussed from decoupling the front end and the back end so that you don't serialize the users and the UI team can work on implementation, take that continuous feedback from stakeholders to refine the UI while the backend team solely focus on how do we control the system and meet that contract of our interaction model. And also the test team, it allows them to quickly determine where the system problems are. If you have an interface that's not working with a decoupled system, you can pull it apart and determine, is this a user interface problem, a backend problem or a communication problem? And it shortens that time to market and also gives you a more ruggedized system and well-tested and thought out at the end. When we look back in the project and think of what are some key lessons that we learned uh, when you're doing a rapid user interface development project, what are the things everyone should think about? I, I think we have three main areas here that we can focus on. One is the people. We really want to enable designers and developers to work together. <clears throat> Traditionally in a system, there would be a lot of parallelism. So, uh, sorry, a lot of serialization where designers went off and implemented a design. It was then handed to the development team to go and do implementation. And in that length of time of implementation, by the time it got back to the design team, it may not be exactly what was intended. There may be some interpretation that didn't happen. Or even maybe the design has changed since then. Other factors have come into play to change some aesthetics to the system or usability. And having these teams work together, work in parallel, and have the ability to be able to test and interface with each other's system early is critical to getting something on time and on budget. To that vein too, the architecture of separating the UI from the backend 
uh, not only helps with that communication and parallelism of time frame, but it also allows you to have a more stable and robust system. It allows your test team, your quality assurance team, and even your marketing team to really get to see something on hardware in the target system faster. Allows them to test out scenarios, whether it's usability systems that they may want to change, the look and feel of something when you actually see it, let's say, in our vehicle under different lighting, to debugging actual integration issues or hardware defects and bugs and being able to quickly determine where that problem is and resolve it and shorten that cycle of uh, reproducibility between the two systems. Uh, and that fits back into validation, user test. Um, iteration is a key. It's going to happen whether uh, you intend it or not. Things will always change, whether it's in the user interface or the back end or the communication. And embracing that and understanding that will happen and meeting that into your timelines and your development process will greatly reduce your time to market and help you get the user interface that you intended out on the time frame you want. So for more information on this system, uh, you can read our full case study. It is on our development blog. Uh, Aptera has been extremely successful. They are continuing to move forward after the pre-orders and build out the rest of the, the vehicle user interface. Uh, it is a large basket of touchscreen display with the gesture control. And we really feel that it was success in the short time frame. And a lot of that felt back into the tools that we use, the development and design process we followed. So thank you very much for your time today.